What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to update our cart summary page for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to add the ability to update our shopping cart. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, moving right along here. In the last video, we added these uh, quantities so we could pick how many of each one we want. In this video, we want to come to our cart page here and add the ability to update this. So if we picked five and we're like, oh no, actually I only want three, we want to have a little button here that we can click to update this and update our session, update our shopping cart. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's come over here to our cart summary page, and let's come down here to where our buttons are. And here we have a home button. And this is just a link. Now we want an update button next to it. And we're not going to use a link for this. We're going to use an actual button. So let's go button. And let's give this a type of button. Now, this is a little bit different. We want to give this a data dash index and set that equal to something. And the thing we want to set it equal to is our product dot ID. And the reason why this is, is because if we come back over here to our page, we'll probably have more than one item, which means more than one button. So we can't have them all have the same ID because we need to use some JavaScript and Ajax to update our session. So we need to distinguish each button from each other. And the way we do that is by assigning each button a unique data index number, right? And that number is just going to be the product ID number because that's our unique number. So we can just use that. So here we have data index equals our product dot ID. And now we need to give this a class. And first let's give it a BTN button class. And this is just pure bootstrap here. We also want it to be BTN dash secondary. I want it to have that sort of gray color. And then we need to give this an ID, so to speak, so that our JavaScript and jQuery later on can figure out when we've clicked the button. So let's go update uh, dash cart, something like that. Okay, and then let's say update and then close our button. That's kind of hard to read. We can tab it over a little bit, might make it a little bit easier. Okay, so in the past, we gave our button an ID. So if we come over to our product page here in our, let's see, store directory templates product page, and we come down here to the button, we gave it an ID of add cart. And that ID is what we use to trigger the Ajax down here. Uh, we're going to do sort of the same thing, but instead of giving it an ID, we're just going to grab the class. And we could do that with JavaScript fairly easily. You could do it either way. And the last time we, we did the ID and this one, we're going to do the class. And so that's why we've given this an update cart class, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this, head back over to the website, reload real quick, just to make sure that looks okay. And okay, we've got this update. And if we right click and view the page source and scroll down here, you'll see it has a data index of three because that's the product ID for this particular product is three. And for the other one, it has a data index of four because the product ID of that product is four. If that product ID was 108, it would say 108 right there. So, okay, so far so good. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to figure out which of these drop down select menus we're trying to update, right? And same thing, if we give them each an ID of, I don't know, drop down box or something, we wouldn't be able to tell which one of these we're clicking on. So are we clicking on this one or are we clicking on this one? So we can sort of fix that by giving these select boxes an ID. So we can come down here in our cart summary page and find this section here with our boxes, our select boxes. And let's see, options selected here, select class. Here we've given this an uh, ID of quantity cart. That was from the last video when we you know, created these to begin with. But in this one, in our cart summary page, we don't want to give this a an ID of that, what we want to do is give this an ID of select. And then we want to pass in our product dot ID. Now, again, this is so we can tell which one of these were being clicked. So again, if we save this, come back over here, we could see this if we hit reload, and then view our page source, right click view page source. And if we come down here, we could see here is that drop down box, and it's got an ID select of three. And if you look at the button, it's button 
as a data index of three, right? See how these numbers are matching up because they're both the product ID. Same thing down here. We've got this guy right here with an ID of select four and its button is data index four, right? So hopefully you're sort of putting the pieces together here, how we're kind of connecting all of these so that then later on in our JavaScript, we can determine which one has been clicked, right? Pretty simple, uh, but uh, a little tricky to, to think through. So, okay, that looks good. Now we need to update our JavaScript. So if we come down here, uh, let's see, at the bottom of our page, we have no JavaScript. So let's create a script tag and Let's see, let's come back over to our product page. Instead of typing all this stuff out again, we can copy and paste a lot of this. In fact, I'm just gonna copy all of this. That looks good. And I'm gonna paste it in right there. Now we need to modify this a little bit. So here we're looking for a click whenever we click that button, but we're not doing add cart. We're doing, let's see, where's our button? Here it is. We gave this, a class of update dash cart. So when we come down here, when we use a class, we don't use this hashtag, we use a period, right? So we use the hashtag when we were doing an ID. That's how you look up IDs. When you look up things in classes, you just use a period. So uh, update dash cart, that looks good. We need to grab the product ID. So we know exactly which one we're looking at. So let's create a variable. I'm just gonna call it uh, product ID, all one word. And let's set that equal to dollar sign. And let's just go this dot data. And then we want to pass in the index. Now this is going to call the cart add URL. If we look at our URLs, we've got a cart add. We've also got this cart update and that's just cart underscore update. So that's the one we want to be calling cart underscore update. So let's change that. And now the things we need to pass are gonna be slightly different, right? So our product ID is gonna be, well, it's gonna be basically this exact thing. So we can pop this in there, but instead of a semicolon, we need a comma here. And again, this is gonna call that index, right? That data index. So that's why, you know, data index, that's this button here with a data index that has the product ID. So we're passing that product ID through the data index into the JavaScript right there. So we also need the product quantity. And this is gonna be a little bit different too. So let's just redo this here. We wanna call the hashtag select, but not just select, we want the select with whatever our product ID is. Uh, which is just this thing right here. So we can add a plus sign and go product ID. But then we also need a space and then we want this, the option colon selected. And then this is gonna be the dot text of that. So let's tab this over. Maybe you can read it a little better. Eh, not really. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, there we go. So again, this product ID thing, if we go to our product page, and look at the JavaScript in that, we did the same thing here, except we called the ID, the hashtag of quantity cart, but we still had the same option dot selected, option colon selection. Same thing here, we're calling option colon selected, but we're just calling select of product ID. Because remember up here, we give this an ID of select with the product ID. So that's exactly what we're calling, select three, select four, whatever it is. And we get that by calling select and then there's our product ID. So it'll smoosh this all together, concatenate it together, and that looks good. So that is pretty much it. Now down here, when we have our success function, uh, let's see, we got a lot of old stuff here. Let's just get rid of all of this. And instead, let's just call location.reload. This will just reload the page. I guess we really don't need much of anything when we're doing this, but whatever, that's fine. So, okay. So now we're calling this cart update URL, which if we look in our URLs.py is this guy right here, but it is then referencing this views.cart underscore update. So we need to update now our views.py for our cart underscore update, which we have right here. So, all right, head back over here. Now, first things first, let's get an instance of our cart. We've done this lots of times here. So request. And then 
let's grab some of this same code that we did earlier for processing a form. And we're just going to paste this in. So we're just saying here, if request.post.get action equals post, which is again, this thing right here, the action that we're calling from our Ajax from our cart summary page, then we want to get the product ID and the product quantity. Now, I guess we could call this integer. I, we really don't have to do that, I don't think, but eh, whatever. Okay, so this is calling product underscore quantity, which is this product quantity. This is calling product underscore ID, which is this product ID. Both of these things are getting passed from the page itself. And so that's what that is. Now that we have this stuff, we need to update our cart. So let's call cart.update. Now we don't have this function yet. We'll have to create it very quickly here. And we want to pass our product equals, and that's just going to be this guy. And we also want to pass the quantity. So we'll set quantity equal to this guy. Now, while we're at it, let's, um, I don't know, let's create a, a response. Set that equal to our JSON response. And inside of here, I don't know, let's, we don't really need to pass anything, but just for fun, let's pass quantity and then let's just pass back the product quantity. We're not doing anything with this, but we have to pass something just so we get a response. So let's return our response. I don't know, it's kind of silly. I guess we probably don't have to do that. We could just redirect to the page itself. I suppose, but whatever, you know, instead we might go return, redirect, and then pass this uh, cart underscore summary page. Is that what that page is? Uh, yeah, either way, whatever you want to do. I'll comment this out, and we'll just return the response. Okay, so now we're calling cart.update. But if we go to our cart.py file, we don't have a cart.update, we have cart.add, we have cart.getprods, we have cart.getquants, uh, but now we need to update. And we wanna pass in self. We also wanna pass in our product and the quantity. This product and this quantity are coming straight from when we call this function right here. This is the product, this is the quantity which are these things which are coming from the post, which are coming from the page, right? So we could take these things and now let's assign them to variables. We probably don't have to. Well, we probably actually do. So let's go product underscore ID, and that's gonna equal, and I wanna change this to a string. We wanna make sure this is a string, so that we'll just pass in the product. And here, let's go product underscore quantity. And here, we wanna make sure this is an integer, and we'll just pass in quantity. Why do we want these to be strings and integers? Well, remember our shopping cart is like four and three. So this is the product ID and it's a string. The actual number of things, like if we have three of these books, that's an integer. So the first one is a string and the second one is an integer. Now, remember, this is what our cart looks like. So we have, uh, I think, a product number two and we've got, let's say five of those, right? So to update our session, First, let's get the cart. So let's get our cart. And so I'm gonna call this, I don't know, our cart. <laughs> this is just gonna be self.cart. We've done this lots of times. And then here we can take anything that's in here. Remember our cart looks like this dictionary. And to update a dictionary, let's go update dictionary slash cart. Basically our cart is a dictionary. We can just call our cart and then pass in whatever we want to update. So in this case, we're passing in the product ID. We're saying, hey, find number four in there, but it's a string, right? So find the key and the key value pair in the dictionary that is product ID and change it. And we could just set that equal to whatever we want to change it to, which we know is our product quantity. Very cool. So if this is a three earlier and we click the two, this will change this to four, colon two, get rid of that. Now let's uh, do our self dot session dot modified, set that equal to true for good measures. And I don't know, let's just create a thing called self dot cart with our new updated cart. And let's just return the thing. We don't probably have to do this, but it's good to return something. And so we're just gonna do that. So, okay, I think that's pretty much all we need. Now we did a whole lot of stuff in this. 
video so far, and it's probably a pretty good chance that I messed something up. So let's test this out. First, before we do that, let's start from scratch here just to make sure. Let's go to our storage and click on our cookies and let's delete our session ID. So there we go. Close this, hit reload. Okay, so we've got nothing in our cart. Let's add a couple of products. And let's say we want three of these guys. There we go. And let's say we want to view this guy and we want five of these guys. So if we go to our shopping cart page here, we've got three of these and five of these. So let's change this to five. So now they're both be five. Now if we click update, uh-oh, something horrible has gone wrong. Let's head back over to our code and let's look at our cart summary. Ah, well, we got this end block. Let's put that at the end, save that. And let's also look at our views.py JSON. Oh, misspelled response. That might do something. All right, so that looks good. Let's come back over here, try this again. I'm gonna hit reload. And let's change this to five, click update. Something sort of happened, it kind of flickered a little bit. If we leave and then come back to our cart, we see sure enough, it says five there. And we can come down here, let's change this one to up to one, click update. Maybe we wanna put a little box up or something that says, hey, it was updated. Eh, maybe we'll look at that later. But for now, if we leave and come back, it's definitely been updated. So eh, everything looks good. So a little bit tricky this time, a lot of moving parts. If you haven't been like really connecting the dots up until now with all this jQuery stuff, this might've been a little, eh, right? Just watch the video a couple of times. And remember the big thing here is sort of this data index. So we're assigning a product ID to each button and also the select ID. Uh, same thing up here, where did that go? Right here, we're given an ID with select and the product ID. That allows us to sort of match up in case there's lots of things on this page. So that each button will have a different number. Each drop down box will have a different number. And then we just sort of connect those dots down here in our jQuery by calling this guy right here that takes that select and smushes the product ID onto it. And then this product ID here grabs the product ID that we can then use. Same thing right here for the product ID that we then pass to our views.py file. And then this is old hat. We've done this lots of times. Grab things from a post, assign them to variables, call our cart.update file, which then just does a little bit of Python. Nothing special here. This is just how you update any Python dictionary. You know, remember a Python dictionary is a key value pair. The key is the product ID, the value is the quantity, and this is just how you update a key value pair dictionary with Python just by using an equal to sign. And we just save our session and boom, return the thing and that's all there is to it. So we're moving right along. Probably in the next video, we'll look at deleting items from our shopping cart and uh, yeah, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.